I'm here at the University of Washington to build the next Huskies dynasty. Now I get it, the Huskies were just in the national championship game last year. But come on, man, so much has changed. For starters, head coach Kalen DeBoer packed up and left for Alabama. Then add the fact that Michael Penix Jr., Rome Adunze, and eight other Huskies were drafted in the NFL draft. There are no returning starters on offense and only two returning starters on defense. Alfonso, the linebacker, and Elijah, the cornerback. Now that's a fresh squad. Are these guys trash now? Did I mention that Washington's also in the Big Ten now? Analysts are sleeping on this team, projecting them to finish 10th in the conference. That's all I needed to know to soak this team up. What do you predict the team will do next season? What's the record? You'll lose four. Maybe eight wins, four losses? Nine and three or eight and four. Eight and four. Uh, I think we can win out the whole season. I don't know how many games we're going to play, but... Uh, yeah, I think it's 12, so 12 right, 12 and zero, up. 12-0. Yeah, right? Go dogs, baby. Yeah. If you were a coach and you were tasked with bringing them to a national championship, what would you do? More, more training, more motivation. Just get after it. Go get the bag, right? <laughs> <laughs> First thing you got to do is just build a team together. Okay. Because a team that plays together is set for success. Carry over the moment, the, like the motivation and momentum that we had from last year. On the topic of momentum, I mean, what would you think is the strength or the highlight of the team this year? We have some good players on the offense. Will Rogers, I mean, he was great at Miss State, so I mean, I'm looking forward to seeing him. Older guys really stepping up, making the team player-led. If you had to label a weakness or some uh, an area to improve, what, what does the team need the most right now? Experience. From last year, I mean, I thought the secondary was a little lacking, but I mean, I got know we got a whole new system now, so yeah. I would love to see some yeah. improvement there. That would be sick. Just be more physical. We're in the Big Ten now. You just got to be a physical and dominant up front. I mean, O-line wasn't doing too hot last year. If you had one team to schedule against, who would you schedule? I mean, Washington State. It's in-state rivalry. Give me Ben or Georgia. Do you have a favorite uniform combination that they wear? Just a, just a home uniform, like the purple. The purple, yeah. yeah. Uh, purple and gold. I like the blacks. The ones they wore in the spring game, the O-line, those okay. are hard. Honestly, I think we need to bring back those uh, purple, all purples uh, during the game against ASU last year. Those were sick in the rain. The throwbacks, they haven't worn them in a while, but I feel like it was like two years ago where they wore the 91 throwbacks. I okay. thought those were sick. We just heard directly from the Husky community what needs to be done to get them back on top. The only catch, I have five years to do it. And based on what we heard, I have seven challenges for today's rebuild. If I can't complete at least five objectives, I will give away a copy of College Football 25 to a random subscriber who comments down below. Here are the challenges for today's rebuild. The bar is high in year one. We must win at least eight games. Over the course of our five years, we need to win the series against Oregon. We can never lose. That's right. Never lose to Washington State. Every year, we need to schedule Alabama. Alabama or Georgia. We need to go and have a great performance from senior quarterback Will Rogers winning at least one player of the week accolade. The last two challenges are about team improvement. In our first season, we can only recruit defense with a priority on getting physical on the defensive line. Then we need to look at improving the secondary as our second priority. Lastly, let's go and get a bag. Our goal is to bring in at least five transfers every single season during the rebuild. With all of that in mind, let's go ahead and get into the rebuild. First things first to complete one of our challenges, we can only target defense in this first year. I see a lot of good offensive players here, like athletes, receivers, offensive line, all that want to be added to our board, but we can't. You heard the community. They all seem to think that defense is the weak point. A full batch of 35 defenders. Let's offer scholarships in hopes we can land any Insta commits. To get the Insta commits, you already have to be their number one interest. And so far, we're not getting any. Sims, you're my last chance. And there he is. Boom. Four star free safety auto commit. Didn't even scout the man so he could be a bust, but it's a me, Mario, coming to Washington. We talked about getting physical on the defensive line. Well, Addison Goldwire is your fix. Spencer, the four-star gem right in would plug right in with Goldwire. Before the season begins, we're going to clear out the busts and replenish them with a fresh batch. Number of prospects interested in Washington was not the problem. Definitely a plus when we add more five stars and none of them are busts. Any offensive players on this list? No quarterbacks, halfbacks, fullbacks, receivers, tight ends, offensive line, none Thing. Like we said, let's get physical on the defensive line and in the secondary. Not a good look here on the preseason second team list or first team list. No Huskies. Reinforcing the reason why we're here to rebuild Washington, even though they're just coming off a natty appearance. It's game week against the Northwest Sharks. And it was a big win for our guys, Will Rogers. 299 yards, five touchdowns. Two touchdowns apiece for our senior receivers, Jackson and Moore. Not much of a question, 37 
to seven, but there will be questions when they go to take on Alabama. A lot of bad blood and tension between these two teams. Heck, they just stole our head coach to replace Nick Saban. The Husky community sure does love their purple uniforms. Let's go ahead and welcome home Kalen DeBoer to a home game, night game, Bama Huskies. There is the old Husky. And here we go, our first in-game look at the Huskies and Will Rogers. Let's see what he can do against the Tide. Number seven, back on the play action, dropped for a nasty sack. The kid from Mississippi State holds a lot of passing records for the school, so I'm hoping his excellence and seniority will transfer here. With the challenge we have set, we can't even improve this offense minus the transfer portal till the next year. So I definitely want to see some young players step up for the long run. A look at the new Big Ten paint on the field. This is going to be an exciting season. Definitely want to take a moment though to say rest in peace, Pac-12. We got our guys just outside the red zone, but let's go ahead and take a shot for the end zone. What a snag. Booth review underway. It's the second time they've already called that on the first drive. There you have it. They let it stand. Jet touch pass here on second and goal. He's got the outside. Jackson, easy touchdown. Off to a competitive start here. This rebuild's unique because it's not like any of the other one-star group of five prestige schools. This squad has the stadium atmosphere. They have the fans. They have what it takes to actually go on a run not too long from the future. Whereas for most schools, you're building from the ground up and it's not always gonna be easy. We can seriously come out here and make a statement against Bama if we can find a way to get into the end zone, which we will back to Hunter. I like what I'm seeing, man. Will Rogers delivering a pretty accurate ball. We knew this would be a dog fight. Alabama cashes in three to make it a one point game. Under two minutes to go, let's go ahead and get some more points. I think that sounds like a mighty good plan. Under pressure there, he got it off to his running back. One of our goals of this rebuild is to get Will Rogers at least one player of the week accolade, and I think he's on his way in this one already. Look at this, bombs away touchdown. Kalen DeBoer better figure out what's going on in the secondary. Unfortunate reality is Alabama is always loaded with some dudes and look at this. Offense aligned four stars out of the five. This is why the secondary needs to get a lot more physical in the trenches. Now down by a touchdown. It's up to Will Rogers to lead the offense. Keeping this bunch of guys out here on fourth down. Let's just take the drag route right across the middle. Super important we get something going here on the fourth quarter. Action ahead of us. Coleman fighting forward down at the one. Never say never in this this game as we strike quickly for the touchdown. Spreading the love to a few different receivers today. Jalen Milrow has the tide right here down in the red zone. Going for a big play. Secondary someone. Man, I feel like if them boys were communicating, they could have came down with an interception. Instead, Alabama takes a three-point lead and we have an opportunity to go get some points. This could be a really bad idea. It's fourth down, but Will Rogers is hot right now. So I'm gonna let the hot hand cook as the receiver gets a massive step. What just happened? Might've just sold our chances right there. We're gonna pick up this first down and at least try to get some points. Quick strike, need someone over the middle. It's Jackson. We're down within three. Use all our timeouts to get into this position. Shout out to the defense for balling it up, getting us in this position. Now we don't have much time to mess around. It's fourth and 17. This Alabama defense has stepped up in a big way. So I'm forced to just take a shot and hope for the best. He got it. Nagata is out of there. Are you kidding me? Husky Nation, stand up. We're coming out swinging in this game against Alabama. You are not stopping that man with his speed. I know the Tide have all their timeouts, but the best part is that they are down by four. Down by four means they can only score a touchdown to get the lead. This is crazy though. In just two plays, they're already down here looking to take a shot to the end zone. This is everything on the line. Someone make a play. There it is. Broken up on the Hail Mary attempt. That's gonna do it. Washington is victorious, 42-38. Player of the game. Let's see if that's good enough for player of the week. It should be. I guess it's actually gonna be a challenge after all to get our guy on this list. Keetron Jackson, 13 catches, 256 yards four touchdowns and they still lost to Utah. In the Big Ten, they give it to Donovan against an FCS opponent. 11 catches, 223 yards, three touchdowns. That's good and all, but it's an FCS opponent. What about the Alabama-Washington matchup that just happened? Quick look on the recruiting front. Looks like Steven Cheeseman is not going to go our way. I wanted a cheesy defensive lineman. No point in wasting our time in that battle. Let's get the points back. What we can do instead is survey our top guys and see if anyone's ready for a visit. Just like Logan Vogel here, we're in his top five, losing slightly to some other schools. 
let's go ahead and get him on a visit. All being said, we should beat Northwestern, but the penalty for losing is huge. So let's go ahead and go with the safer route. Michigan, I think all things considered, we probably lose that game, but if we lose, it's not that bad. And he still gets a fire podcast interview out of it. For other recruits like Randy Godwin, we know two of three of his interests. So by deduction there, we can go ahead and give him the hard sell anyway. We need to get more aggressive because schools like Texas are already gunning for these guys. Now it's time for the Boeing Apple Cup where we got two in-state rivals going at it. Another night game out here in Washington. It's a little bit rainy, that typical Seattle vibe. Should not stop our guys from rolling. And I'm hoping it doesn't stop our guy Will Rogers from going all out today. I want a player of the week worthy performance. In my opinion, he should have had one this last week, but they went ahead and gave it to the Indiana receiver. That's all gonna change as Coleman threw the end zone what a fun time to be a husky fan it seems like they always got top notch football out here heck i remember when my boise state broncos came up to washington last year and they got cooked by michael Penix jr dotting him up for like six touchdown passes will rogers is doing an awfully lot of the same to washington state third touchdown of the first quarter even with pass interference in the way it don't matter start of the second quarter and guess what will rogers in the huskies driving most of our challenges will take the whole dynasty to do but this one's interesting because Will Rogers is a senior, so it has to be done this year. Big guy in motion, frees up the other tight end. It is a onslaught. Analysts are projecting this team to finish 10th in the Big Ten, and I sure as hope they're sleeping on the Huskies. If they keep playing like this in EA College Football 25, there should be no question about it. Little comeback here in the third quarter by this Washington State group. It's really not gonna matter. Looking to put an end to this one early. Big man, first and goal. And then over the middle, it looks like Jackson's gonna get sprung open for an easy one. Defense has been in chill mode for most of the game, but let's step it up for one big one here. Fourth down, it's no good. That is a wrap 55 to 27. Not much of a close one. Just all that you can see purple rain. Will 352 yards and six touchdown passes be enough? Again, what is it going to take? They go ahead and give National Player of the Week to Alex Orgy. Six total touchdowns, 407 yards. Went ahead and just scheduled visits for some of our top recruits. The perfect guy to be our first commit in this Washington rebuild, Cameron Workman. Let's go to work, man. Three-star gem, a sophomore Juco. Now four in one on the season after getting the win against Northwestern and losing a close one to Rutgers. It's time to take on Michigan. Game of the week, let's see if this Big Ten matchup can live up to the hype. Looks like we're already gonna have to get our sights set on a rematch down 45 to 20. The defending national champs put up a game against this Husky team. And in order to secure our fate in the Big Ten, we're gonna have to beat the nation's best team. That day is not today. 52 to 20, Michigan cruised. We had so many four and five star prospects visiting this game, but it looks like the loss didn't matter for Tyler Bosby, Kevin Sternberger, and that's really it. It brought us closer to guys like Addison Goldwire, but for others like Logan Vogel, it scared him away to schools like Notre Dame. A ton of points freed up, so let's go ahead and refresh the board. Bro, I swear this recruiting challenge is super tough when I'm refreshing the board and I see five-star prospects like Mauia or Whitehair still in it. Five-star receivers, we could go get them, but we're not. Husky fans, put your hands together for Trevor Heaton. You said we needed to get more physical, so we got this stud from Tulsa, Oklahoma. And we can get a whole lot more physical if we just close the deal with Addison Goldwire. Unfortunately, lost John King here at at the very end to Florida. Devon Cargo blocked us out with a deal breaker playing style, but the reality is we're the only one that's offered him a scholarship at this point. Fingers crossed something changes before the end of the season. For the rest of our guys like Amir Coxie, slow and steady win the race. We got to beat out Ohio State. Or if you're four-star gem Lane Durant, we got to focus on beating out Penn State. Who says a school like Washington doesn't need some help from three-star prospects? Wade Costanzo, a gem DB. Right out of Temecula, California. Okay, Coach Sir Sponge knows a thing about that. We can speak his language, but for guys like Smoker, we just need to schedule them against USC. That's how we best get to guys like him. Let's go, man. We're bringing up the DT from San Diego, California. Talk about a monster addition. His presence is definitely needed because after we got blown out by Michigan, we let an Iowa offense drop 56 points on us. That does not bode well for the rest of our schedule, including six seed USC, four seed Penn State, and number five Oregon. Remember, in the amount of time we're rebuilding Washington, we have to have a positive record against Oregon. 
big week here with Max Slater committing, Celesi Smoker, a three-star gem, Amir Coxie, four-star gem, and a lot more headway made on our other guys. This late in the recruiting game, we're still finding gems in guys like Jeff Swinson. You know what they say, defense wins championships. And we're super intentional about that. Managed to win a big one against USC, but we're gonna have to pull off another trick against number one, Penn State. And here we go. This has gotta be one of the toughest places to play. In fact, in general, I think EA put a lot of effort and work into this stadium, this atmosphere, this experience that year in, year out, no matter what dynasty I'm playing, I seem to struggle at this field. Maybe that can all change as the Huskies come into hostile territory. Over the middle, it's Jackson, number five. Great first play. The routes are super squiggly, even for a veteran quarterback like Will Rogers. He's going to have a hard time seeing the routes, seeing the things progress. If Will Rogers feels this way, I can only imagine what a freshman quarterback is thinking when they're on the road against Penn State. Doesn't matter in this case because Will said, I don't need to see a route. I'm still going to dot you up. Hunter with the bow and arrow little salute to Michael Penix. Even after that opening drive, we're not calm and ready to go. We're gonna have to deal with adversity once more until Jackson catches in. Maybe that'll give us the composure we need moving forward. No, I take it back. The stadium is still rocking, down two scores. They are not giving up on their squad. Lobbin went up and over. Brutal, absolutely brutal right now. Let's go out to our tight end. I think we've dialed up the right game plan taking on this opponent on the road because we're right back to first and goal. And all of a sudden, Penn State does not know what has hit them down three scores. I don't think Penn State was counting out Washington, but I can almost guarantee you, number one in the nation, they were not expecting this barrage of offense. Gonna give them the ball back. Let's see if they have anything in the tank and can maybe put up seven points before this half's over. They settle for three, so we're gonna take a shot here. Play action, launching one, one on one ball. All right, we took our shot. We had to try it, that's for sure. Instead we're going to take the over the middle hunter ball this core of receivers led by guys like hunter are putting on a show today how do you do back against the wall we're already forcing them to go for it on fourth and inches and they don't get it with singleton oh boy it is so quiet in here you can hear a pin hit the ground because penn state fans are in absolute disbelief drew aller and nick singleton did not show up in this one today looking to get a little bit of redemption on this drive down by 25 this unit is gonna need to get this conversion and so much more penn state able to score one more time that is a wrap 38 20 stonks going up for the husky a few more recruits liked what they saw in that last one. Really shoring up our list here. I have 200 more hours and I really don't even know what to do with it. Rounding out our season on the road against number two, Oregon. Ducks are trying to NIL themselves to the victory. They have backing from Nike and they're willing to fund Oregon with unlimited NIL dollars. No, seriously, that is what a report said from the founder of Nike. Definitely feel like that's a tough pill to swallow if you're any other team facing these guys. Down two touch touchdowns in this one early before the strike to hunter goes down the sideline breaks a tackle cashes in big will back to work again on the corner route this time jackson drops it this will be a battle for the many years to come in the rebuild as we're looking to go victorious in the series score all the way to the house. What a touchdown. Got some serious speed on this Huskies offense. I don't know if that'll last going into the future, but holy acrobatic touchdown, Will Rogers. I'm straight up gonna have to see that again. That was crazy. Poise in the pocket, shakes off the sack, getting sacked from behind, delivering a dime. 28 seconds before half, forget the three-pointer. We're going for a six-pointer. And because I still don't have a player of the week from Will Rogers, I am passing it here at the one yard line. Thankfully it worked. Normally. The smart play is to just cash in by running it. Now we're gonna go back into the red zone and fight. Let's keep it alive, run the zig out of reach. Once again, the smart thing to do is take three, but I got player of the week ambitions on my mind. So let's go across the middle, get a block fell short. Safe to say we paid for it. The outcome of the game might have looked different if we just took our three, but it didn't stop the fact from Oregon scoring twice. Their offense is seriously one of the fastest units in the game. It's nuts. Fourth and 10, they cannot hear my audibles. The noise is getting loud out here. Doesn't stop the fact we convert. This is it. Fourth and 20, the game on the line here. Gonna throw one to Jackson. He hauled it in. Technically still got all our timeouts, so never count out this team until the final whistle. Check out 
about that touchdown. Might need some pointers in the comment section for onside kicks because I never seem to get these things to land. Third and five, game on the line. It is a pass. He's going over the middle. Someone make a stop. There it is. Bruh, I got way too hype. They were in field goal range. So what do you know? They take three points and that's going to be game. Tough one. Battled it out till the very end, but Oregon beats us 52-42. It means we're going to have to pull off a crazy streak in the last few years of this rebuild. Will Rogers was cooking and we tip our hat to the senior. It's not Will Rogers, but Denzel Boston, our sophomore receiver getting player of the game. And as it stands, that's a brutal way to go out. 13th ranked in the nation, just missing any of the 12 spots in the playoffs. What a year for Carson Beck, good enough to win the Heisman. Our year is going to wrap up with the Music City Bowl against the Rebels. Before we get to the bowl game, it's early signing day and we have the seventh best class in all of the nation. Imagine if we had access to offense. I believe it would easily catapult this top tier defense to number one on the recruiting list. This is how the Big Ten shaped up Michigan beat Oregon in the championship game. Nebraska, Ohio State, and USC finished higher than us. Penn State really fell from grace when they were a number one seed and we beat them. And I seriously just realized the Husky community knew what they were talking about. Multiple people told me eight and four and that's exactly what happened. At least we had Giles Jackson represent second team All-American list. Will Rogers might not have got player of the week, but he got first team all Big Ten. But that doesn't negate the fact we failed a challenge and have six of seven remaining. Absolute electrifying season, 48 touchdowns to four ints. How in the world was our man not even on this list for Heisman? At least senior Sebastian Valdez went out in style in the Music City Bowl, but ending on a 27-13 loss just stings. If it didn't sting enough to lose our own bowl game, it stings far more to see our rival Oregon win the national championship. Jonah Coleman's the only one thinking about transferring and I'm really not in the mood for that. So please persuade him. Come on, man. The transfer portal has opened up and it's time to get that bag. The defense of only recruiting applied to the recruiting board, not the transfer portal. So we can now get some much needed additions on the offensive side of the ball, like Tobias Merriweather from Cal. Javante Barnes from Oklahoma should be a good fit. And heck, why not give Justin Martin a chance? Already loaded up on defense, but when you see a four-star like Dylan Tatum, let's go. Making good on our promise, we're securing a bunch of the transfers on our list. We have essentially got all of them and the ones we didn't get are about to commit as soon as next week. Let's go ahead and move into year two with an 86 overall squad. Year two in the rebuild for a team with high prestige like Washington is just a stepping stone until the next year or two when we're competing. We got physical on the defensive side of the ball and this year we're now able to open it up to offense as well. So Pandora's box is opened. Let's go ahead and take a look at some of the freshmen on defense that will be game changers in two, three years time. First one we look at is Lane Durant, elite development. Why not go with five star star Trevor Heaton on the other side? If for whatever reason that doesn't work out, four star Tim Tuka Fu elite dev. And then you already know five-star gold wire, another star. Corbin Kunz, a star defensive tackle. We got some dudes ready to go. Starting middle linebacker, true freshman Jeff Swenson clocking in. And right behind him, Brian Hope. How can you not have hope in this defense when you got guys like Amir Coxie? The season in front of us starts off with Georgia, Washington State, before finishing with Oregon. A lot of really good quarterback candidates in this recruiting class. I think Denzel Sizemore is my favorite one. 92 throw power, 80 accuracy, 85 speed, 91 excel. Look at all of the abilities. Man is coming out of high school ready to go. I'd be a fool not to give him all my points. Valami Finger, what a name here, already in the lead. Looks like Gregory Bowie, 96 speed would be a great addition. Really interested in our gem four-star prospects, Tim Zahersky, Jason Kozlowski, and Josh Mustard. Randy Wilder rounds out this list, but man, we have so many good options. Let's go ahead and start year two with the bang, dogs versus dogs. Looking to prove that Washington can hang in there with anybody. There seriously is no greater test than number one seed Georgia. Even with Heisman winner Carson Beck in the NFL, this is no easy task, but a sack here from Russell Davis gets us right into this thing. A huge stop prevents them from getting into the red zone, keeping this game in reach. Transfer quarterback Martin is stepping up to the plate in week one for a start. We'll see if he can last as the long-term quarterback. Just a matter of time till we figure that one out. Back to the jet touch pass. Good block on the edge. Boston walks it in. This place is rocking, defending our home turf. 
pressure coming in out to the sideline he beat us a really unfortunate turn of events has us pressing right now looking for points any way we can get it need to see justin martin step it up something will rogers did quite frequently the big game was never too intimidating for our last qb will and i'm hoping to say the same thing right here for martin huskies got some fight in them after all with the blitz coming in hot we have the senior tight end breaking free nothing like the hardest opponent in the league for week one am i right martin is just what we consider a bridge quarterback looking to bridge the gap until one of these five-star freshmen get in here as good as martin looks right now it's crazy to think those five-star quarterbacks at a high school are better on the attribute side of things and that has me optimistic for the future of this offense because as you can see right now we're starting to fade in a very big moment just don't have enough juice to compete against the bulldogs no denying giving up 49 points in this game to georgia is a big reason why we're not in it but i hate to say it's all on the defense when i know an elite offensive performance keeps us in any game now out of timeouts we're just forced to work with what we got it's a darn shame as we hate to start off oh in one but that's exactly what happens in our home opener in year two got our number one choice here in denzel sizemore on a week seven visit for now let's take things as they come it's the apple cup against the cougars had no trouble whatsoever in this rivalry game at washington in year number one it's year two we're on the road it's not going to be as easy as the huskies backyard and the mission is still the same we're out here ready to win every single game in the rivalry matchup down three zero after our first drive stalled out hoping for better results in this one. There we go. Fourth down conversion to the big man. Looking to finish it off. The running back is sprung free first and goal good play by mohammed let's finish it off with boston jet touch pass he's got the angle cougars are playing us much tighter than they did last year that's for sure so let's go ahead and chuck up a bomb and hope merriweather gets there he does transfer to transfer crime love to see a new connection take shape as he's gonna go back over the middle to merriweather once more touchdown let's go ahead and keep it going before half any insurance points will do and the big man is someone i can rely on over here great play sets us up for the three bomb we slip it in if we can go ahead and score one more time that'll be all the insurance we need out here and yep there it is touchdown big man matavo the senior is our security blanket right now good vibes only in the apple cup washington takes it 37 23 let's hope the rest of year two pans out like that last game as we got a tough one against arizona coming up at least on the recruiting front we're losing a couple but a majority of them we are starting to win jason caused last right here from seattle washington the first domino to fall in year two and right behind him the big four-star gem tim zahersky out of arizona the physicality of the defensive line is not going to be a question for many years to come battling it out still for a couple five-star qbs josh mustard a four-star gem at least gives us some insurance whereas gregory bowie is a 96 speed deep threat so far so good but no man denzel sizemore we lost the battle he committed to usc at the very end and this dude is one of the most gifted guys coming out of high school wow usc bow me some more they got the other five-star quarterback we were going for beating us out here too why do they need the best two quarterbacks in the nation only one can start looks like we're riding with josh mustard for the future which is actually not a bad thing 94 throw power is the biggest arm amongst scramblers here added stefan Kenyon to the board maybe he'll be a good insurance option definitely don't mind what i see the secondary continues to get stronger with alon jean pierre i feel like i could say a lot of raunchy things with the last name finger but i'll hold myself i just know finger is gonna be a problem for the defense not a surprise that mitch cheeks is a bust but check out those stats 94 throw power 91 speed 92 excel i think he'd be still darn good in fact i'm gonna go ahead and take a chance on him another big moment when you land a five-star right tackle we love to beef up this line a rough stretch right now in year two has many guys locking us out because you know what they're thinking we're no longer championship contenders. And at two in five, we are getting blown out by teams like Arizona, Illinois, Maryland, and Nebraska all handling us. The schedule does not get any friendlier. And unfortunately, after Will Rogers left, it just doesn't feel like as good of an offense and the defense is still growing. A couple big wins later, we're back in good graces with some of these guys, but I think the damage is done. Notre Dame's gonna win here. I think Oregon's gonna win here. I'll go ahead and try to even hard sell, but I 
I think it's too late. Definitely too late for Stefan Kenyon. The one guy it's not too late for is out of Alabama. It's Enrique Sellers. Very good second half of the season, taking our two and five in Wabam, six and five. You know where that leads us. And is this the second year in a row we're on the road at Oregon? How did the scheduling work like that? Regardless, we're gonna come into this hostile territory ready to win as that's the only mentality. We will not shy away from a challenge as we hit Williams in stride. He's going all the way to first and goal. A disappointing season with a strong second half can get all the more sweeter if we can end it with a win against Oregon. If we lose today, which I don't want to talk about it, it would mean we're 0-2 in the series with three years left. Meaning we can never, and I mean never, drop another game against this team. 33 yards, that's not all too intimidating cash. Less than a minute, we got good matchups on all our receivers out here, including Meriwether. So if he gets a step, I'll hit it to him. And that works just as well. Mohammed redshirt freshman running back. A couple folks broke free, including our big tight end. Let's see if he can get free on this play right here. Scrambling, surveying. Let's just step it up. All right, Martin, I need a iconic play and why not bread and butter? No need for iconic when the easy route is open. This is a third and 10 and we dump it right over the middle, fourth and one. Up by four, the game is really on the line right now. Quick flat out to Merriweather. He's breaking free on one tackler, spinning against another first and goal essentially. Here we go on a jet fake touch. Wow, Bricks, one tackle, spins forward for a positive play. That looked blown up from a mile away, although it was a good one leading to a nice score right here across the middle, number three. Final two minutes of the game. Oregon still has all their timeouts. Let's end it right here. Jet Tut to Boston, spinning around a couple defenders. The Ducks still doing his dance, thinking they got a chance. Let's hand the ball off, chew some clock and some yards. Good run. I'm thinking it might be a good idea to pass here. And yes, I was right until they broke it up. Ducks just broke that thing up and we're in trouble, fourth down. And Williams is the hero snagging that. Our rivalry series is gonna go to one and one in this rebuild. Washington takes it. How about them Huskies? Big win, even bigger recruits and guys like Tyler Volk. This year's edition, Heisman winner Antonio Williams, 1,200 yards, 15 touchdowns. Two years in a row, it's the Music City Bowl. Maybe we'll get a win this time against Alabama. Before we get there, we can see Washington continues to surge. Third best signing class at early signing day. The stage is set, Alabama at a 90 overall. They went six and six this season. Go ahead and make it seven and six after they finished us off off by two touchdowns. Truthfully speaking, this was not a good season by Husky standards as Martin just had a average year. Nothing, and I mean nothing, got done on the ground. Like seeing two young receivers step it up, but yeah, all said and done out here, a lot more work to do. We definitely played a part in knocking Oregon out of this bracket, so that's cool and all, but Clemson goes ahead and wins this thing over USC. Transfer portal just opened up, and man, we have guys like Aiden Chili's out here. This dude's been tossed around. Happily gonna add him and Malafu to our board. If for whatever reason, Aiden Chili's doesn't work out, we have another Oregon State transfer quarterback in Gabari Johnson. It seems like everyone's trying to get out of Beaverland. You know the drill, we gotta make sure our players get the bag, so we need to entice at least five transfers. We got him, Aiden Chili's is coming to Washington and he'll at least be a one year rental while our freshmen are developing. Jackson Harris from Berkeley and a few more guys right around the corner. And with that, we have satisfied the requirement to bring in at least five transfers. A top five class with 19 four stars and three five stars. Dang, I'm impressed. Four star bust Mitch Cheeks is actually the furthest thing from Cheeks. A 75 overall quarterback or running back off the rip. Looks like Mustard and Cheeks will battle it out for our QB of the future. And you see this right, sophomore running back Jordan Washington, 99 speed. Year three for the Huskies, it's time we turn the page and opponents start to bow down to the Purple Rain. 90 overall across the board, it starts again against Alabama. Then we look to stay true against the Cougars before jumping into mostly Big Ten conference matchups. Aiden Chili's is a star, he's up to 91 overall, I'm expecting big things. But this right here is the future, Josh Mustard, a star. Peep that in the top right, how about coming equipped with a road dog? Want some mustard on that dog? Or are you more of a Cheeks guy? 80 overall looking 
really good, but the normal dev says it all. Joey Reed, a star, and another impact Joey in Joey Muhammad. Three freshman tight end, Tim Zahersky is elite dev. And Enrique Sellers is a star. Even offensive linemen look good, especially guys like Malik Dunsmore, Marvin Lamb, and last but certainly not least, Sua Hardman, five-star elite right tackle. Even depth guys like Kozlowski are stars. This is literally a brand new offensive line at every position, or I should say in a year to two to come. We thought Goldwire was good, but prepare for Mafu Topa and Justice Atagwe. I'm literally going on and on. Seriously cannot believe the haul we got. Only a couple teams had better scores on the recruiting board, but we were intentional about gems and no busts. Minus Cheeks, of course, who still came out at 75. If we thought the last class was good, get ready for all of these five stars, a lot of them showing interest in our squad. If Mustard doesn't pan out, Coco Byler is a good candidate to get our scholarship and a spot on the roster. In his first start, Aiden Chili's gets Big Ten Player of the Week against Bama, but it wasn't enough as Alabama dropped 47. Better total offense, but better rushing from Bama. Aiden Chili's 299 and three, while also adding 88 yards and two rushing touchdowns. We are gonna have to shake that one off and run the rest of this schedule. I believe we have the team to do it. Washington State's gained a few points in their rebuild, but it's no match for our rebuild. Bringing the Chili's Roadshow on the road against Washington State in a big rivalry matchup. I'm excited to see him in action. Experienced and bounced around now between a few teams from Michigan State, Oregon State, now Washington. This dude has seen a lot, which makes him really experienced in learning new offenses, being adaptable. He's done a great job and I'm excited to see him in the senior season. The craziest part to me is he's already done what I couldn't do with Will Rogers in just one week. He got player of the week. Right down the field, no problems, except for this looming fourth down, but I think we can conquer that with a dot to tight end Otten in a touchdown. There we go, opening drive score. One half in the books, we're up 31-21. This has been a high scoring affair, no doubt. And silly mistakes like rough in the pass are exactly why this thing's a shootout. Chili's can come in, drop a dime to the big man, and another touchdown down on the board. This game was never in any doubt despite what the Washington State offense does. In fact, Aiden Chili's has thrown for six touchdown passes, and you better believe he's looking for seven right here. Heck, we might as well just go ahead and give it to him. Touchdown, Washington Huskies. There has been no problem whatsoever in the Apple Cup. Three years in, make it 3-0. and Coco Byler and Trevor Provo in the same week committing to us. Man, it's a good year. Shout out to Chili's in the gang. Decisive against Northwestern, Northern Illinois, and Rutgers. No offense to these guys. Guys, but they're the least of our troubles as Illinois, Wisconsin, and Oregon await us still. If none of those other quarterback commits work, we got Everett Sandlin, the number one player in the nation. Like, no, seriously, as you can tell, national one, state one, position one. The season started off promising with national championship aspirations. I think we still have a chance. 18th seed going up against Wisconsin. Checking out the Wisconsin Badgers on the road. This is a look at another hostile team, another hostile environment. The Big Ten in general is a tough place. The eighth toughest place to play. As you can tell, everyone is ice cold right now, and it's going to take some big plays to break free of that. Third and two up the middle. We're going to convert. Past midfield here. Muhammad in the backfield. My goal is just to get around everyone. 99 speed is filthy. Third and 17. The stadium is buzzing. We can't do anything. Audibles, nothing, but it didn't matter. First down. Aiden Chili's has poise. He is a veteran presence out here on the team. Going to dump it to the running back first and goal. Let's go ahead and finish off the drive with a quick strike over the middle into defender arms. Wisconsin tying this one up. We'll go ahead and drop a dime to Otten and get back into the red zone. Job is not finished by any means. We'll take the underneath to Harris first and goal. Here we go. Play action. Going to scramble out to the right. Easy dump off here if we want it. Sure. I'll take it. Snapping it here, third and seven. It's Muhammad out of the backfield. Way to catch, way to break, first down. And let's go ahead and just cash in with a dagger score in the first half. This one turned out to be much lower scoring than the pace in the first half as they take a big fourth and 19 shot. Essentially out of hope and chances, they just had to throw one up. Now second and 14, why not go for the dagger bomb actually for real this time? 
Boston's got it. On the road, coming into Wisconsin, winning 24-10. That's textbook stuff. Let's see if the good news continues in the rivalry game. They're coming up to Washington this time. And so far, so good in this one. You can't just come in to our home and walk in here like you own the place. Chili's gonna show you why. Right on down to the inches line. Gonna step it up, deliver to Clark. What a fine touchdown. We're up by like 17 points. Going into the fourth quarter, this one's feeling good. And it is a huge day. The Oregon Ducks never stood a chance. That is a very, very rare statement for me to say. Super impressive when a team like the Huskies can come in and assert dominance in a big rivalry matchup. And yeah, they really asserted dominance in this one. Couldn't cash in in the final second, but that was really just an emphasis rub it in point. Washington was all business 41-23. Even with a really good season under the belt, Michigan ended up facing Minnesota in the conference championship game. Look at Illinois and Nebraska too. They're exceeding expectations. Whereas teams like Ohio State and USC as well as Penn State are all underperforming. To be honest, I'm not sure how our school in Nebraska made it into the playoffs when Minnesota was a better team. They swept Michigan, gave them two of their three losses, one in the regular season and one in the Big Ten Championship game, 27-10. Looks like Dylan Whitkey figured out the Michigan defense. Whereas Jaden Denagle had 185 yards on 50% completion and an int. In the same season, they beat LSU, UCLA, USC, Iowa, Penn State, Maryland. And like I said, swept Michigan. I feel like they got jipped. Deja Vu, the same player, has won Heisman in back-to-back -back seasons. Antonio Williams, get him to the NFL now. This season, Ryan got tight end of the year. Just like that first round berth against the Georgia Bulldogs. Is this our year with transfer quarterback Aiden Chili's? Well, only time will tell. On the road in Georgia, dog v. dog. It seems like the answer is no as of this second pressure way too much. Already going to step up and go for it here on a huge fourth down over the middle. He secures it. It's Harris. Another fourth down. That's right. The tight end is going to spring free. That is why he's tight end of the year. It is going to be a dog fight. No pun intended if we're going to take on Georgia. A good strike from Aiden. We need another one right here. I think we are here ahead of schedule as the defense has not had enough time to develop. Yes, it might say we're a 90 overall, but that is not taking into a account all the young guns. Big play from guys like Aiden Chili's are the only reason we're ahead of schedule. So shout out to this man for keeping us competitive throughout the season. That ball was not very competitive for our guy to make a play. Chance at redemption here in the third quarter. Gonna jet touch it and boom, Boston springing free into first and goal territory. Husky Nation looking for a big one here. Gonna go to the receiver, Williams. He is clocked at the one. More of an elusive back, not a power back, which would be ideal at the one. We're still gonna hand off to Muhammad. And see, that's what I'm talking about. Uh, an elusive back, not very ideal more often than not. Really don't wanna give up more points than we have already. Trying not to and still hope in them. That's a big sack. And look at that face. He knows that is not a good stop. The fan was worried we'd come back into it, but honestly, fourth and 15. This is brutal. What a snag. That was seriously it. The season on the line. And guess what? The season is on the line again. Fourth down over the middle as he's hit. It's Otten, the tight end of the year. What a haul. What a run. We still very much have a chance to make this game interesting. We have all the timeouts in the world. And now it's another fourth down looming. I'm going to go for it because we've gone for it literally all drive and it's going to pay off again Aiden Chili's touchdown back against the two we have the ball and we have a chance to play hero in this game knocking off Georgia is going to go a long way on our resume for the remainder of the tournament Boston snagging that one in between a star defender and taking it to the house only problem is we scored really early there's two minutes for Georgia to respond and they responded in mere seconds it only took a couple plays so we're back at it again. What a dime. Good defense. I'll give him credit for a heroic stop there. As we go to the sideline, Williams, yes. Aiden Chili's knows there's potential. This is the last time he picks up a football in his collegiate career. So he's trying to make it count. Seriously, some inspirational stuff right now. Stepping up, scrambling. He's going to run forward for five. Under a minute to go. We got a man open. Deflected. Intercepted. That is 
is gonna be it oh my goodness that's heartbreaking wow okay the season ends like that on a deflected pick stockton and the bulldogs barely survive on pace to bring another really good class led by two five stars and 11 four stars at early signing day after georgia defeated us they lost to marshall and badly so that was a surprise outcome but what's not surprising is michigan going the distance once again i'll stand by and defend minnesota in this one shout out to chili's for the 40 passing touchdowns and five rushing we've had some good quarterback play through three seasons a few guys go into the nfl after that season we had none other than aiden chili's a first round pick i don't know if you all noticed but we went up half a star in prestige which has big implications on all of our recruiting efforts recruiting has been going extremely well at this point in the rebuild and i think we actually have all the pieces we need on the roster heck we were this close from going on a big run this last season so going into year four with even more guys more training and two young freshman quarterback that just got a learn from Chili's. The training boost's gonna hit different and they're ready to go. And there we go. We got the transfers we set out to get. That is the five that we needed to meet the minimum threshold. One, two, three, four, and five. Just like that, going into year four in the offseason here, 91 overall. We got some dogs as Jordan Washington got a huge boost. 91 overall running back, 99 speed, 99 agility, 99 change of direction. Some question marks at quarterback as there are three serviceable options. I'm not going to lie. I think Mitch Cheeks is our choice. Lane Durant and the defensive line are going crazy. 85 overall in 92 speed. He is going to be a force. Tim Tukafu on the other side, another soft sophomore elite. Brian Hope giving hope to the linebackers and the secondary is much improved. I feel like as of right now, we're in the driver's seat. We've done what we set out to do, got more physical, improved the secondary and built a solid team all around. With attribute boost, we're actually up to a 93, which is crazy. We might just say, forget Mitch Cheeks. Let's go straight to Everett Sandlin. Everett Sandlin is a star. He was the number one unanimous player in the nation. Even the fourth string Tyler Provo is a star. There will be a national championship championship with at least one of these guys and like i said the prestige went up so it's wraps man every prospect and their mother want to become washington huskies to put it to the test we have three four star guys right here and i'm gonna prove that one of them will insta commit eric alfonso and our last chance angelo Carstens. okay maybe i was over ambitious the point is we practically have access to everyone hardly any player is considered out of bounds so while we continue to go crazy and build a dynasty here is a look at year four. Gonna have to get through our usual non-conference before usual Big Ten. While everything is pretty usual, the only thing that's not is us. We're on the way up 93 overall. The rest of these teams, they're not like us. As it stands right now, the first college football playoff poll, this team is built to win now. Seven and one, lost by three to Alabama, but never looked back against the Raging Cajuns, Washington State, Northwestern, Ohio State, Indiana, Illinois, Rutgers, and now bring on USC. Everett Sandlin as a true freshman is inspirational 25 touchdowns to five ends really good stuff you know he's putting up a crazy season when burns has 11 and a half sacks and we still have about four to five games left win after win on the recruiting front three picks already for all in jean pierre usc might be good with a 90 overall but we're better in every department the defense as stated by the husky community was ever so important to build right well go crazy husky nation i have them up to a 94 overall at home it's time to see what the hype is all about Enter Sandman. You are now in Sandland for the freshman quarterback with a star cast all around him dumping one off here. It definitely helps to have a 99 speed running back and then freshman red shirt elite Zahersky, a tight end that will be reliable for years upon years. Instead, we'll hit Williams and get ourselves into the red zone. I'm starting to gush about this team and it's easy to see why. Sandland is taking everyone into his universe. Huge run, 90 plus speed. Sold out crowd. Everyone wants to see the number one player in the nation continue to light it up this year. It's probably never been been done before but he's aiming to become the first true freshman to win a national championship sandlin is bringing something rogers nor chili's could bring to the team it's dual threat ability and he's gosh darn 
good at it. You take one glance and you forget you're dealing with a true freshman out here. It's a friendly environment when you can back your quarterback up with a top tier defense out here. They weren't existent on that last drive, nor on this one. USC takes the lead. No problem at all for this unit. Trucks it up the middle for another one. Third and 13, need a big stop. Another sack from Trevor Heaton. This dude was an amazing signee just a couple of years ago. A second sack of the game, huge play. Heroic defense, and now all we gotta do is just run out the clock. That's gonna seal it. Washington wins 35-31. I'm honestly flabbergasted that a true freshman has led this team to a 10 in one year decisive victories across the board. I shouldn't be too surprised because he has the best supporting cast in the nation, but still, it is encouraging to see him just plug and play. With one regular season to go against the Ducks, he easily could pass the 40 touchdown threshold in his true freshman year. The way this rebuild's going, we're clearly not gonna be here for his year two, three, or four season, but I can easily see him getting up to 99 overall in an NFL draft here soon. This is iconic. Burns with 12 and a half sacks, and then Trevor Heaton with 11. Burns and Heat, I think they easily answer the question about getting more physical on the defensive line. On the road to finish out the year against Oregon, the last thing you want to do holding on to a one seed all year long is to drop it in the finale against a heated rival. Better yet, it's not stopping the duck, but it is a snowy one and it's cold in Eugene, Oregon. Not going to stop the heat the Huskies are feeling. Definitely going to need to be more mindful about the plays we're running. I believe our running game should be having a big game for sure in the snow. Jordan Washington got hurt, so it's up to guys like Muhammad to carry the load. Passing, we've got to be careful to take our time and deliver a good ball, as I expect to see a ton of blitzes from the defense. Another big play inbound, out of reach. Sandlan on the road, bringing the action with him. Going for it here on fourth down. How did he drop that? That turnover is gonna let Oregon Ducks get back on the field. Ducks botched their opportunity on offense and Muhammad's gonna carry this thing to the one. Sandland takes the quick snap across the middle. It's Zarski holding on to it, our tight end. Snow or shine, we're cooking it. This game has massive implications as our record against Oregon's on the line. We win here, we win the series against the Ducks in this rebuild. I'm telling you right now, that is a feat in itself coming into Eugene and knocking him off is huge. On first and goal, Sandland gathers his composure, seeks and destroys. Touchdown, Williams. It might be cold out, but our quarterback, Sandland, is red hot. A snowball, dime, gift, delivery, present, whatever you want to call it. Harris is out of there. Monster touchdown. This is amazing. That was his 40th touchdown pass. Ducks giving us a ball game, that's for sure. And rather than going for a 53-yard field goal in the snow, I'm choosing to go for it, and I'm hoping someone will spring free. It didn't work out. Needing some help here on defense. I'm hoping they can make a stop and talk about a huge play by the redshirt freshman. That is Gene Pierre, our guy, number 10. Monster turnover turned into points. It looks like a wild cap formation. No one is fooled. We are watching the Ducks implode before our eyes. Absolute huge turn of events. But this only becomes worth it if we can get points out of this drive. Rather than play conservative and settle for three, I think we can surprise them here by going with a big play. Their blitz got to us first. Now a huge kick for our young kicker, and that is not going to go well by any means. It's up to the team to hope in the defense and talk about a monster sack. And that's right. They feel so inclined to go for it here. Going across the middle, intercepted by Sims. That is two costly turnovers by the offense. It's a me, Mario Sims, on the last interception. And now under two minutes. Let's kill this clock and go home. What a ballsy effort today. Jet touch pass to Armstrong as he's rumbling down the sideline. Will not be stopped. Touchdown all the way. That's the emphasis. An icicle dagger in the freezing cold. Before I start talking my talk, let's recover the onside kick. Thank you very much. And I am proud of this team. Oregon may be six and five and about to go to six and six, but they are always a tough one in our side. Last time out under their belt, there it is. Extremely risky, I know. This has a low probability of working out, and it didn't. First and goal, they need this to work more than anything. If we can tackle them inbounds, this thing's over. 
but oh no, Oregon takes the lead. I think we really messed it up big this time. That is unfortunate. Truly, I thought this thing was over, but clearly it was not. Now we're forced to seriously just take one last shot and see if our guy can win it and go the distance, intercepted to seal it. And wow, I was celebrating before this thing was over and the Ducks show me why you can't do that. They pulled it off in the very last second against all odds. They threw two picks and then somehow managed to come down the field and win it. It proves that we're fallible, but maybe it's the kick in the rear we need. And yeah, I think I can say with confidence, I was right. It was the kick in the rear we needed and the Big Ten Championship's ours. The Terps never stood a chance. I'm sorry, guys. It's all Huskies here. 45-17, the Terps got this far and fall to a elite Washington team. Everett Sandman proving why he's one of the best in the nation already. And celebration time is here. The Big Ten Championships coming back to Washington. The first ever in this school's history since they were just in the Pac-12. The playoff picture is set. We're a one seed and honestly, I like our path. The region we're in, it looks like we'll face the winner Tennessee, Miami. But around the league too, it's pretty cool. Georgia Tech, Marshall, Tulane, Stanford. Maybe we get some underdog stories. Only question for me is why is Georgia ranked number one in the top 25. As we begin our ascent to the national championship game, San Lin as a freshman, 47 touchdowns, 4,000 passing yards. This is seriously the best performance I've ever gotten from a true freshman. It totally makes sense why he was ranked the number one player out of high school. Feeding Jackson Harris for 15 touchdowns and 1,300 yards. Armstrong for another 13 touchdowns. And then even Tim Zahersky, 64 catches, 627 yards and six touchdowns as a redshirt freshman. Defense popped off, no doubt. Heaton actually over took Burns for the lead in the very end, 14 sacks. Allen, Gene, Pierre, five interceptions to my guy. Surprisingly, Ricky Collins wins the Heisman with these stats, and I don't think our guy was too far behind him. In fact, we got some other accolades on the team, like best interior lineman. I was right. We were behind Ricky Collins and DJ Lagway as a true freshman finishing third. Everett ain't worried about it. His sights are set on the natty, just like the rest of the team. A beautiful day at the Rose Bowl between the Huskies, the volunteers. I am excited for this matchup on deck. Which dog is going to rise to the top? Nico's no longer here, but I'm sure he's done an awful lot to get his program in a good shape. I don't think they're quite ready for the sand land experience. Touchdown to Zahersky. First blood in the Rose Bowl. Let the games begin. We also have no problem over here getting second blood in the game. And wow, I thought we had him until the linebacker, or is that a DB? I think it's DB. Came out and made an acrobatic play. That seemed to have kick-started this Tennessee offense, the juice they needed because they're finding their guy first and 10. Three points is better than nothing. We have a defensive battle on our hands until we get a streaking running back playing the receiver position. Washington, don't ever test him with a sorry DB. When you line up a 99 speed guy on the outside, you better have your best DB ready. These guys have answered back throughout the game so I'll give them that much as thankfully Williams gives us some more icing with the game on the line up by two we need to convert here get the first down slip screen to Washington behind a blocker he broke the tackle but I think that was too much first down clock management not our forte apparently needing to go for on fourth down just to ice this one out ourselves leaving nothing to question victory formation Sandland has his first collegiate playoff victory in the Rose Bowl 21-19. We just can't stay away from Georgia, can we? We've seen these guys in Alabama so many times. The Cotton Bowl, no bigger stage to face Georgia now. We do have the better seed and a slightly better roster, so I'm excited to see our guys go to work. Our young team has answered every test that has been thrown their way this far. By far, hands down, the biggest test is right now. I'm gonna go up the gut and see if we can trust Mohammed to cash this thing in. Did not work out, but I'm hurrying back up, seeing if we can catch him napping, and wow, that was a great switch off by the Georgia D. Getting the ball at our own one did not pan out to be a good drive for this bunch. So we're going to have to go and strike right here, right now. Let's just hand this one off to Washington. A nifty juke and he's in broken ankles. Our first score of the Cotton Bowl goes like that. And we're going to need a lot more to go our way if we're going to come out on top. There's no way we can let that keep happening. Stepping up, it's Sandland. He's taking it himself. What a hero. Third and seven. Let's step up in the pocket again. Escape a broken sack, a spin. Did he get the first? And I just realized we have no time left to mess around. Going to get the snap off and... 
Nail in three, that was clutch. Our team has come alive, fourth down, looking to hold Georgia right here and could not keep up with the drag route. Textbook defense, opportunistic offense throughout most of this one and a huge hit to jar it loose. Georgia out of timeouts. If we can recover the onside kick, we can kneel this one to the very end. And there we go. Reedy recovers, hits a juke, cuts back right. He's not gonna go all the way. But the best part is we never needed him to. It's victory formation. We're gonna be able to ice this one out completely. Georgia's season has come to an end. And they're going to have to try their luck next year. Washington, our journey continues on. This should be it. The final game inbound. It all comes down to this. Sooners, Huskies, the national championship game. For all the glory and honor, we have turned the Husky program around after losing Penix Jr., Roma Dunze, a completely new coaching staff. It only took us a few years to get the right guys into the program, shape them, train them, build them, and look where it's led us. A lot of stars on this team and a lot of youth in years to come. I seriously think we built this team so good that if we go into the next season, we could win it again and the next season. Sooners look to be having a great rebuild as well as they're ready to finally win a natty. Trust me, I got a lot to say about that. I don't wanna let it happen, so let's go to work. Down 7-0, let's go with the read option, keep it. Couldn't get around the big man and we're dragged in the backfield. Oklahoma has truly come to play in this one. You can tell 14-0, they mean business. Lucky for them, we also mean business and we're not going down without a fight. Looking to cash in, let's give it to Harris and he can do the rest. Booyah. Fourth in inches past midfield. They're in no man's land and they want to send it. It is a pass play. Pressure is there. Gone. Heaton. I might have mentioned it a time or two, but man, I love that Heaton guy. Bringing the heat. It'll never get old saying that as Armstrong breaks free. Yes, sir. What a playmaker. Oklahoma Sooner fans, what is going on with your team? They were up 14 0 and now they're letting guys like Sandland just take off and do it himself oh baby how many yards did he just cover weaving out and around all the traffic yeah you got ice in your veins buddy they are looking to respond in this one if i've ever seen it fourth down we held husky defense bending not breaking exactly what we ordered and i did not order this pressure let's cut back right and just throw this thing away oh my goodness no crazy trick play on that one instead we got third and 22 and i think he's got a step he sheds one in two defenders would have been a miracle if they connected and we'll just go ahead and settle for three points. That's good. We have been chasing Oklahoma all game and the chase will continue looking for seven points to tie it up. Big third down, looming, scrambling. We'll just stick it right. I think we can get around the big man thrown forward for the fourth and inches. Honestly, QB sneak was not a bad idea, but I think I'm gonna keep it with a QB power. Yeah, that'll work just as well. Lower in the shoulder. Boom. Talk your talk, 17. In the thick of it now, this has become a really good game. And I mean really good game. And there he is. Lock down Island over there, Gene Pierre inspirational play let's go because of that we're past midfield and can take a crack at getting the lead in the national championship game let's go ahead with a little bit of trickery here on the reverse it seemed to fool a couple people hoping for a better result we did not get one instead we'll take it ourselves here second and seven all the way down to first and goal flag on the play it's going to be holding on the offense i guess that's why he sprung so free that is a shot in the foot now we're going to have to get creative here and that is a bad way to go down. Hats off to the Husky defense for bending, only giving up three points. Now we have all the time. By all the time, I mean a minute 20 and one timeout. I don't feel panicked, I don't feel rushed, nor should we. I think we can go ahead and get some points with some big plays. Worst case scenario, I need to remember we can take three and force overtime. I don't wanna do that by any means. I wanna win now. But like I said, there's no rush to do anything if it's gonna put ourselves in danger. One play at a time, let's just take it, play, 
by play. Our running back Washington is hot, so I might as well feed him the rock and see what he can do with it. Cut and right, I thought that was nifty until it wasn't. Truthfully, it looked promising and then it hit the fan. 16 seconds left. This is turning into a promising drive. Sandland down the sideline, first and goal. Still got that handy dandy timeout, but maybe we won't need it if the jet touch pass is the play that seals it. Touchdown Huskies. With eight seconds left, go ahead and booty bump for all I care. That's gonna give us the lead. Sophomore receiver Joey Radi, the biggest moment of his life and a huge deflection. Hit the Oklahoma quarterback as he was throwing it. Now time has expired for one final Hail Mary and this is that chance. No good. The Huskies are national champions. Storm the field. Here comes Washington with the title. Truly a dominant team and a dominant team for years to come. We have listened to the community. We took our time to observe the Washington campus. We interviewed the players, the people, got a good sense of what needed to be done as coach and Sir Sponge has come in and delivered. If you are enjoying these type of rebuilds and if you wanna see me go to more campuses, listen to the community and rebuild them, make sure you subscribe to King Sponge. Let me know in the comment section your thoughts. And as always, keep it here with King Sponge for all your college football 25 needs. Washington Huskies, I send you off on this note. Congratulations on the Natty.